four aviation unions have kicked against the decision of the federal government to concession for four international airports. The unions include the National Union of Air Transport Employees, Air Transport Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, and OCTER. Hadi Sirika, the Minister of Aviation, last Thursday received the Certificate of Compliance issued by the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC, which confirms that he has complied with all needed requirements to proceed with the process of concession for the four international airports in Lagos, Abuja, Kanu, and Port Harcourt. However, the unions have described the handing of a Certificate of Compliance by the ICRC to the Minister on the ongoing concession as a ruse, questioning how he got the certificates when no one but himself knows what is being concessioned. And joining us live to talk about this is Dr. Kubi Udolfia, his legal practitioner. Good to have you, Mr. Udolfia. Hello, good evening. Now, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, why is this concession causing so much controversy, if I may ask you? Um, well, that's an interesting question. I, I wouldn't really say um, it's causing controversy or it's controversial. I, I think um, the challenge we're having is that um, the unions, the aviation unions, they are entertaining some fears and concerns on the way the ministry Ministry of Aviation or Minister of Aviation is going about with the concession. And these um, fears, you know, they, 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 they relate to the issue of the fear of job losses, which may likely result from, you know, the concession of the airport. And then I, I think they've also alleged um, lack of transparency in the way uh, the minister has gone about the whole process. Mm -hmm. And of course, the cost implications so, and, and they believe that they've not really been carried along. So I think that is why they are kind of agitating and challenging the whole process and then threatening to, you know, ensure that um, the process does not go on as planned. And that leads me to my next question, which is what would the minister have done differently? Um, it's, that's difficult to answer because um, to start with, the minister has not yet come up with a formal response to the agitations of the aviation unions. Um, but going by some of the allegations that have been made, uh, I think an allegation of um, lack of transparency has been made. I mean, the unions are alleging that um, the process would result to handing over national assets to um, persons or companies that have been predetermined and which would lead to dire consequences. So based on that, I, I, I believe probably the, the process would have been more, probably more transparent. And that is me speaking from, you know, based on the complaints or agitations of the aviation um, unions. Mm -hmm. But I know back in September 2016, when two committees were set up by the minister, I think that was September 2016, um, a steering committee was set up and a delivery project delivery committee was set up. I recall then that the minister actually invited the unions to be members of um, the delivery committee. But the unions in turn are saying that the delivery committee were not allowed to do their jobs, that they were still deliberating when um, decisions were already taken and they were blindsided. And secondly, I also feel that probably um, wider consultations should have been made mm. in terms of consulting with the stakeholders because I think, um, I mean, nothing can't be resolved through negotiation. Right. Probably the unions would have been consulted more. Now, at the rate the unions are promising a showdown, you know, can, can, how can this truth be negotiated? You, you just mentioned that there's nothing that can't be negotiated. So how can this happen? I, I, think, I think it's just for the minister to try and assuage their fears. Um, the primary one is job losses. I mean, let's, let's, let's not um, be pretentious about the issue of job losses. If you're going to hand over some of the airports into private hands to operate, for the purpose of efficiency, you're sure going to have, because I mean, one of the complaint stakeholders, other stakeholders make about the current um, dispensation is that in terms of staff, fund is over bloated. Some of them, I mean, they have so many administrative staff, some doing nothing, and some of them may have to go. So, but these things can be negotiated such that even if jobs are going to be lost, 
you ensure that the emolument and entitlements of these people are paid. You don't end up like um, the, the star, former staff or employees of Nigerian Airways or NITEL, who up till today are still agitating for their uh, retirement benefits and entitlement. So I think some of these funny issues can be negotiated. The issue of cost implication, I mean, they've expressed that fear that um, I, and private individuals coming in or private companies is going to increase cost of doing business. That will be transferred to airline companies and consumers. Those sort of issues can easily be negotiated. All right, before I let you go, what are the pros and cons of a concession? Is it beneficial in the long run? Of course, definitely it's beneficial. It has, it has minor um, um, demerits, but this demerits, if you look at it in the long run, you find out that they're not actually demerits. Like I mentioned before, I mean, it's almost inevitable that you're likely to have job losses. But in the long run, when these guys take over the private individuals, they'll create efficiencies which would lead to more employment. Of course, my, my real concern about the way they are going about the concession, because the first phase, the government is planning to concession the four international airports, the one in Kanu, Lagos, Abuja, and Pofakot. And if you look at the trend, data shows that between 2017 and 2019, about 17 of the other airports were not viable. They were running at losses. They were being subsidized with revenue generated from Lagos. So if you now concession the sport, how will you be able to concession the rest of the 17 that are not viable, that have been running at losses? So I was thinking that this concession would have been done in block. So you have like, you know, the issue of, okay, take one, buy one, and take the other three. So let's say if you're um, taking Lagos, you have to take six other airports in the north that are not viable because it will be difficult to find concessionaires for those airports. But having said that, the um, merits are massive. To start with government, they've confessed government has no money to run all these airports. So they need the support of private individuals, private investors. African Development Bank some years ago you know, estimated that we need about 1.5 trillion Naira to fix the infrastructure deficit in the airports. So they need this support from private in investors. Private investors will come in, they'll develop the airport, manage them properly, modernize the airport so that we can compete effectively with our you know, rivals in the rest right. of Africa. All right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Kubi Udofia, for your contributions there. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.